welcome back to It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thanks for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Uh, Kevin, buddy. <laughs> What's up, man? I'm fighting a cold. I'm sorry, man. I'm tussling with the climate right now. What gives you a cold? Is it just germs? Yeah, germs. I'm tussling with the germs. The germs are winning. But you know what? Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you stuck it out for mostly me because of all of our viewers. Um, wow. <laughs> and I am super, super glad you're wow. here for this episode. Thank you. It's uh, going to be fun. It um, is going to be a good one. Uh, as always, these are sponsored by Cardsphere.com, yeah. the best place to buy, sell, and trade magic cards. It's almost right. like I scripted that. Um, genuinely, they are a really awesome place, though. Yes, uh, they are really good. Pause for effect. I promise. <laughs> Should I have read the pause part? Never mind. It's fine. We'll keep going. <laughs> no, they are really, really fantastic. I use them mm -hmm. very regularly, and I'm actually wearing their shirt right now, not that you can see that. Uh, wow. And I love it. Yep. Um, it's a pretty nifty logo. It I is, honestly. Say. I really like it. Um, also, I just wanted to really quick, before we get into this episode and do our random card of the day, just thank everybody for entering our Instagram giveaway. Yeah, appreciate that, guys. Um, that was cool. Honestly, I fun. think this has been our most entered giveaway that we have ever done. We had a huge amount of people enter. People uh, excited for the new set, man. They are excited for the new set. So we really, really appreciate the support. We'll obviously do another one in February. We do these every month, in case you do not know. Uh, and so be on the lookout mm -hmm. for that. We'll probably yep. do a YouTube yep. giveaway yep. Uh, coming up the next time. Uh, oh, yeah. But, you know. Um, gotta get on that monetization train. Gotta, yeah, we gotta monetize, guys. Our, our, our algorithm's so good. <laughs> you don't even know. Anyway. It's, it's tops. Random tops, card baby. of the day time in 3, 2, 1. What do we got? Opal Gargoyle. This is from Urza's Saga. So it's name. one and a white for an enchantment. Uh, when one of your opponents successfully casts a creature spell, if Opal Gargoyle is an enchantment, it becomes a 2 2 creature with flying that counts as a gargoyle. Huh. Thoughts? <laughs> um, that's real cute. I interesting. I don't hate it. I would never, ever, ever, ever play it. But I'm no, like, I would never Wizards, I see what you're trying to do, and I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, it's like it. interesting, right? But yeah. Um, uh, no, is it, that's bad. Is it till the end of the turn? Or does it just stay a creature? No, it's just a creature. So it's a two-two for two with yeah. flying. But only when they cast. But only when they cast a creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just seems really weird. <laughs> it seems like a lot, a roundabout way to get a two-two flyer. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm I don't love it. I don't but love it I don't either. hate it. You know, it's like meh. It is penny legal, so you can play it in your penny league. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can also play it in the uh, uh, in vintage. Um, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, this God. is not very good. No, uh, I'm like. In draft, I feel like I might play it. Like, it's filler, but it's fine, right? Is it fine? Yeah, I guess it's I fine mean, if in I draft. Was draft. Especially back in the day when creatures kind of sucked. Okay, well, yeah, I guess it's... I mean, it's a 2-2 two -two flyer for two, essentially, because they are going to play a creature in limited. Eventually. What are they going to do? Hold off for, like, three turns so you don't have a 2-2? Two -two? Yeah, no, like, I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying they don't, but I'm like... <laughs> what this does is really just chump in the end, right? I mean, maybe. If it has flying, though, you might be able to it swing flies, in for a, a move or yeah. a turn or two. If you get two hits in with this, it's more than worth it. Are we really talking about Opal Gargoyle as if yeah, it's... Yeah, we are. It's it's okay, guys. It's not great. Bye! Opal Gargoyle sounds like... It should be more impactful than it is. <laughs> a little bit. That's how I feel about it. It sounds like a, a weird, like, really dark jam band to me. Our jam band? No. Can it be our doom? <laughs> um, yes. Side project. <laughs> um, okay, so today, guys, uh, we thought we would take some time and do a quick modern mm -hmm. overview. We like to kind of do this from time to time with different formats. In this case, we're looking at modern, and we're just going to do a brief overview. Uh, what decks we're seeing, what new cards we're seeing hit the format now that we've got uh, mm -hmm. Ravnica, two now sets of Ravnica out. Uh, yeah, one yeah. of the cards is very impactful. Um, yeah, and it's so, interesting, though. We're just gonna kind of give a brief overview, let you guys know what the stats are, and if uh, kind of, I guess at the end, the decision will be made as to whether we think the format is in a good place at the moment. Oh, let's all right. make that the, the goal. That's our, our thesis. We didn't plan that, but it's gonna be the goal now. It's our the I'm writing it down. How do you spell you write magic? Very quietly. Um, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> with your needle of death. Okay, so uh, first things first, let's look at overview of the kinds of decks we're seeing, that sure. being aggro, control, and combo. Uh, aggro is hugely kind of taking over at the moment Yeah, at 52%. Uh, generally speaking, aggro is pretty high, so I'm not super, like, you know, it's not surprising, but 52% is a bit much, I would say. For modern, right? I mean, we yeah. were... I'm used to like a 40, 30, yeah, 30 that's kind of deal. I, yeah. Around there, roundabouts. I agree. Uh, seems a little bit high. Control seems down at 22%. Yeah. Um, we've seen a few control decks come up recently with like Teferi from Dominaria, things like that, that have been very good in recent past, but uh, right. seem to not be... It's st still good, but not quite as good now with the aggro decks taking over. And then combo sitting right around 27, 26, 27%. Mm -hmm. um, not super surprising there. Uh, that, I imagine, is going to go down because this is technically including a lot of data with KCI, and mm -hmm. that is a combo deck, obviously. That's going to go down to zero uh, now that that's gone. So right. um, well, that that yeah. combo percentage, I take it, will probably go downhill a little bit. Yeah. And um, hopefully we'll get some new combo decks in, but that's kind of what I am seeing. So yeah, probably, I mean, we can look, right? Uh, it's probably still, drop around to 20%. Yes, would you say? Like I would that. say uh, 22, 20, somewhere in that range. So, uh, but we'll see obviously over the coming months uh, as modern fleshes out without KCI. But mm -hmm. uh, obviously with 52% of the meta sitting in aggro uh, listings, we do have our top three decks, all of which are included in the aggro category. Uh, blue red aggro, or is it Phoenix? is sitting at 9%, and we'll talk a little bit more about the Phoenix deck here in a bit. But oh, boy. Man, is that deck sweet. Um, it's uh, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. very, very cool. Uh, red deck wins for some reason. Is it 9% now? Yeah, like... That and feels weird. <laughs> and it's not special red deck wins. It's no. just a bunch of red cards and some mountains. It's literally and the original red deck wins. Like, yeah. it's not... Yeah. It's not really new in any considerable way. Um, no. So, uh, curious. Very weird. All right, Modern. Um, Let's strike one. <laughs> strike one. Uh, Death Shadow is sitting at 7%. Yeah. I love the Death Shadow deck. I'm glad that it's still seeing a good bit of play. It kind of went down. Mm -hmm. It was really high for a while. Right. Well, it didn't duel well with humans for a little exactly. bit there, right? So. Uh, which does kind of bring us into the next point, which right. is decks that we are not seeing much of, which True. humans being one of the big ones. Fair. And I'm a little surprised by that. Yeah, that's interesting, right? Um, humans didn't lose any piece. No. That made if anything, it theoretically, it could have gained some things from the newest set. Yeah. Um, now, is this is this a case of people are just playing different decks, or is this deck worse? I don't, I don't, really, I don't know. really know. I think it's right. because we're seeing so many aggro decks and like burn-focused decks with yeah. stuff like the Is It Control deck and Red Deck Wins. They've got ways, they've got a number of different ways to deal with individual cards. And sure. if you're one-for-one one trading a bunch of these humans, Normally, I would kind of say that the humans would outpace you, but I think if you've got a lot of different burn, it's mm. very hard for them to deal with all of these pieces. They can sure. maybe deal with one or two with meddling mages, things like that. But what are they going to do against, you know, lightning bolt and, you know, lightning, or not lightning strike, not that that's going to hit modern, but you know what I'm saying? Like helix all these different yeah, helix. Yeah. yeah. Um, they can't deal with everything. Sure. And so I think that with the the upcoming is it aggro kind of style deck and then red deck wins it's just getting outpaced by burn i mean that's the yeah. only thing i can think of i mean humans is, is really good if they build their ball Ooh, right yeah, if yeah. they get a big board and kind of just keep yeah. hitting you if their champions get bigger and all that good stuff mm. but if they're not like sticking champions and keeping them around for a while uh, i mean that's not great champion is kind of I don't want to say the pivotal piece, but it, it helps really get the ball rolling for all the other humans yeah. um, with uh, that oh, that other card. The dude that gains life and gets one ones. That's fine. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's some pivotal pieces, though, that if they don't get and they don't invest a few turns in, like the deck just kind of fizzles. That's true. I suppose. And I mean, if you're taking away their key pieces, even as they're getting them, like mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to deal with it. So, right. Um, yeah, we did say once upon a time this deck was so good. And, and yeah, that, and it's now taking its toll. We were wrong. Surprise. Well, no, 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 We were wrong. It's still a great deck, <laughs> but it's just. It's not the taking over style no, deck that we kind of thought it might be. You can just kind of see its weaknesses now. Yep. I, I suppose. think that's correct. Maybe. I think 
maybe this these other aggro decks are just in response to all of this, but well, who knows? Um, but yeah, I am glad Death Shadow is back too. Yeah. Uh, I really like the Grixis Death Shadow deck. That deck has not changed since its initial takeover, really. Right. Um, and it's still just solid. Uh, it just has. It yeah. feels. I've said this multiple times. It when you play it, it genuinely feels like a legacy style deck. It's sure. not on the power level of an actual legacy deck, but it's just like you're doing so many things per turn for like yeah. no for nothing. You, yeah. <laughs> let me just cycle this. Let me draw seven million cards and let me play this thirteen thirteen. Which sorry, it's not a thirteen thirteen. It's only a nine nine. It's totally fine. Like no. Yeah. Um, it's just for one mana. <laughs> like that's yeah. stupid. Um, yeah. It feels really good. To- to play it does feel Definitely. really good to play it's a fun one uh but yeah so aggro decks really really taking over mm-hmm. uh not super stoked about that but i'm okay with, like i'm a little bit indifferent towards it um i th- kind of thought we'd see a little bit more control so i'm a little surprised i will say are you disappointed you sound a little disappointed i am a little disappointed only because mm. i mean i'm a, I'm a control player generally speaking yes. so uh yes. i always like when when my home team does well uh, oh, Kevin. And they're not right now. Um, <laughs> sweet Kevin. Sweet baby Kev. Uh, but yeah, so uh, anyway, so that's kind of how the decks break down right now. Uh, we have still seen a number of interesting decks, things like Lantern List Control, which right. is basically just a prison deck. Uh, really interesting deck, though. I was actually looking into that prior to us sitting down and kind of talking about this. Yeah, yeah. That deck is sweet. <laughs> yeah? It's like, I mean, it's it's still like uh, the the goal is still kind of to mill somebody out but it's less like focused on doing that one card per turn but they do it like war of invention right well they were of invention but they also have the like mill four land uh from like hour of devastation that they can just continuously get back with crucible of worlds yeah 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 that's the win con like it's super dirty wow uh but it's mostly just a prison deck which is not fun for people to play against or even potentially play but true uh it is just a sweet deck. I'm really stoked about that one. Uh, Bloomless Titan is still doing pretty well. Uh, Scapeshift Valakut is still a thing and doing pretty well. Uh, they're fine. So I feel like Modern for a little while is, is kind of like a club yeah. where at, if a deck is busted or does well for one, two years or yeah. so, it's kind of like, all right, yeah, you're in modern forever. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, I think that's kind of... You know, if nothing gets banned out of it, you know, Valakut, Dredge. And we do go through waves where, like, well, like we've seen, like, Death Shadow is a good example. It took over for a while. It was a pretty strong contender. I think it was the highest played deck percentage-wise at one point. It was. Um, And then it kind of took its toll back. Like, it it hasn't been dominating by any means. Uh, It's gotten significantly less play recently. And now it's not up above anything crazy, but it is getting a decent amount of play again. And so it's like... It just comes in waves. The meta responds to itself. Sure. And so it's always going to be like, here's one deck taking over for a bit, and then everybody's going to build the deck to beat it or choose the deck that's already pre-established to beat it. Yep. And then that deck's going to take over, and then you just kind of go back and forth. It cycles. It's, it's, it cycles. It's an evolution. It is. Yeah. Um, but those are kind of the decks that we're seeing take over. And we actually took a quick peek as well into the top cards that were being played. And there weren't many surprises Lightning Bolt's still up there. Snapcaster Mage is up there. Uh, Mountain is now the most played card, technically. Most played <laughs> land. Um, but uh, still pretty pretty much what you would expect. <laughs> except yep. for, uh, and maybe hmm. this isn't like super surprising to some of you, but Arclight Phoenix is now the most played creature yeah. in modern above Snapcaster Mage, yeah. which feels real weird. Uh, yeah, that one was weird for me. And <laughs> Snapcaster's in more decks, if that tells you anything. Yeah. Um, it's curious. A little bit. Uh, curious. <laughs> um, so let's let's break down the card for those of you who don't know. Maybe you're living under a rock or inside a <laughs> forest of rocks. So Arclight Phoenix... <laughs> is a 3-2 for 4 with flying in haste that says at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've cast three or more instant and sorcery spells this turn, return Arclight Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yep. So it's got recursion. If you don't exile the sweet little sparky boy. Sweet little sparky boy. He'll come back and bite you. Yep. Some storms never blow over is the flavor text. Oh, I thought you just made that up for a second. I was so impressed. No, I wasn't. Um, Some storms <laughs> never blow over is a phrase I like to say. Just ab- in general. About Arclight Phoenix. 
<laughs> specifically. <laughs> I was thinking about it on the way over here. Yeah, it's such um, a good phrase. Yeah. So this is curious. <laughs> now, that's, I mean, that's not a common effect, but there are a bunch of different phoenixes that are kind yeah, of, of course like that right yeah. chandra's phoenix comes to mind yeah um but they all generally i mean it's a phoenix yeah they it, come back and and yeah. do stuff yeah um but w- it's weird that is it not weird that excuse me you're doing great bud my lunch wanted to visit <laughs> oh god don't tell me that is it weird huh is it that a card like this with two toughnesses in modern because it doesn't pass the lightning bolt test i know it gets recursion yeah well it's so the reason in my opinion i will say that this Mm. actually works is because you don't pay extra mana just to get it back sure you're getting you're playing three spells a turn which Mm -hmm. is a lot but for the decks that this runs that's not tough like sure they're all one mana or give you mana so like it's not difficult to actually get to that three that three spell threshold yeah um but there's no additional cost like a lot of the past phoenixes that we've talked about it's like when you attack with a creature, you can pay two and bring back this creature. And that's like, okay, so now you're restricting. You have to assume that you're restricting two mana every turn, theoretically, to bring this card back. Sure. And like in this case, it just happens on its own. It has haste, it has flying, so it's evasive and quick. So right. even if it dies immediately, you still got the swing in. Like they still either had to deal with it as soon as it came in or right. get hit by it. Yeah. And so like, it is weird because it doesn't pass the lightning bolt test. Right. But like because you're playing spells that you would want mm-hmm. to play in this style of deck anyway, and this is just freebie at that point, like you have to run it, right? Like <laughs> Absolutely. There's um, just no way around it. Yeah, it's interesting because my follow up question was do you think it's a case of this card was just built for modern, it's modern viable, mm-hmm. or I don't know. We've got all these great one mana spells in modern and metamorphos. Do you want to just maybe try and see if I don't? I, it's fluid. Well, I don't know actually. because you know the deck that we built. I say we was built. <laughs> Where'd he go? There goes we as a collective. Uh, you the, included the magic community. The viewers. You sitting at home <laughs> or in your car. Or on a plane, or in the bathroom, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, Probably in the bathroom. I'm loading the list. Get ready. But the de- the <laughs> the list that was built is essentially a more mature version of the well standard uh, spells matter deck. Yeah, that kind of exists in some form or fashion in most standard seasons. Not maybe not most, but a lot of standard in seasons. In a lot of yeah. Right. So it's around 10 to 12 creatures and then a bunch of cheap spells that either draw you more cards net you mana or deal bolt damage stuff. yeah that's it uh is this just a case of well i think we have all the pieces right now that are legal to play maybe we can just make a good spells matter deck i i mean maybe that's it i don't know it's a really interesting list i think uh because more surprisingly <laughs> perhaps than Arclight phoenix there's crackling drake yeah, so that's the one that <laughs> is kind of interesting. So Crackling Drake... It passes the bolt test. Yes. The, for one, passes the bolt test for sure. Yeah. For two, it's... Well, n- not maybe in this list. I'm, I'm, I don't know why Bedlam Reveler is not in this one. Um, it's in some of the Is It decks, but not this Yeah, because Bedlam is cheaper the more instants and sorceries are in your yard. Right? Yes. And it is already very strong. Yeah. It's like a 6-6 six, six with Something prowess. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really like Bedlam Reveler, honestly. Why aren't you playing that? I guess because this flies. Whatever. Look, the point is, <laughs> uh, this is not by any means modern viable, right? I mean, like, it technically is now, but like, it. But I don't I mean, think this was like made uh, with modern Built in, in mind. its bones, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, this is the bumblebee that shouldn't fly, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, well said. <laughs> It's all the phrases today, guys. Hey, I'm, I mean, what am I here for? What do you pay me for? I don't. All right. Shoot. Bye. <laughs> uh, I, I got to talk to my lawyer. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but no, it's it's a four blank four, right? It's a four blank four. It's a blank four. For four. Yeah, for four. Two blue, two red. So, like, already that's not a comfy mana cost not at all for modern <laughs> now there was once upon a time an absurd deck with five colors just stupid mana cost it was ridiculous but like this is a two color 
yeah. deck. I don't know. I don't know. I would, anyway, like that mana cost, people have to consider for modern. Yeah, of course. It's not being good enough. Um, and then it just like, it doesn't do much. Yeah. It's just a big thing. So. It replaces itself, which is cool. But like. Well, like in a, in a, in modern, if it's not outright aggro, which I suppose this is technically. Well, like, the thing about it is like around like humans and stuff like that, this wins the game theoretically. Hmm. I think it does. Good point. Because, like, I mean, yes, they have Mantis Rider, which can block it, but this already just on its face of it can either block Mantis Rider because it has four toughness or yeah. can just outpower it if it's got more power or more instants and sorceries in your yard or exiled. So, like, it deals really, really well with low ground mm. decks because <clears throat> it does just have flying. Yeah. And it's not going to get burned out, most likely. Um, and so, like, if you get a swing in with this you're probably fairly likely to win against those decks because it is i mean yeah. the 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 sky is the limit with the power of this card right like you've got what 30 instants and sorceries in this deck <laughs> yep so like this can theoretically one shot somebody so like sure you i mean the i think this is really in here because it's like the cheap way to win you know okay. what i mean like yeah. against certain decks it's perfect against a lot of decks i'm not really sold but it is a i mean well, it's powerful yeah and i'll thinking about it i'm not gonna say nine times out of ten but a lot of the time aren't you just gonna trade with like a death shadow or something here because yeah. it's gonna die to their big thing if it's eldrazi they're gonna die to the big thing whatever yeah. it is but at that point don't you expect it to be maybe like a seven four and eight four yeah something hopefully big and powerful hopefully gritty yeah um so yeah, I think you know you're probably you're probably edging towards the truth, sir. That's weird. I'm never towards the truth. Um, yeah. Interesting. It is interesting to broadcast to your listeners. Weird. That you're I'm, never mostly for wrong, the truth. <laughs> I'm mostly wrong. I'm mostly wrong. Well, fun fact. Here's a here's a little here's a thought question. A if, thought question. If someone's wrong, did they tell the truth? If someone says something that's incorrect. But they said it with conviction. Is that them lying? It's not them lying, I guess. But I don't lie. But I'm it's just not wrong. The truth? A lot. Curious. Philosophy's fun, y'all. You should read a book. You should read a book. Why are you listening to us? Just go read a book. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So interesting developments happening in modern, mostly from the new set, uh, or not the newest, but Guilds of Ravnica. Yeah. Um, Really stoked to see that, though. I do think Arcalite Phoenix is really sweet. I've actually seen Arcalite Phoenix also hit things like Legacy, which is really sweet. What? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's super easy to get three spells per turn. In oh, Legacy. yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes uh, perfect sense. So, but like, yeah. isn't it, doesn't that seem just a little slow? Uh, not in the right deck, I will say. Is we'll probably do an matter? update on Legacy at some point, and we'll talk about this. Oh, I don't want to do an update on Legacy. Well, I like Legacy. All right, for the two of you out there that play Legacy. And that aren't listening. Um, we'll do <laughs> LSV if you're out there. LSV, listen to us. Um, <laughs> we have things to teach you, I promise. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, I will wow. say one thing that is interesting. The Is It deck seems eh. to be a little bit takeover-ish right now. Uh, just right. that we're seeing it hit the top eight a lot. It's not sure. necessarily winning the tournaments. We've seen things like the one we're looking at now, which is in some other place, uh, is... Kitchener. What is O-N? Is it Oregon? I think it's Oregon. Okay. In <laughs> this one, uh, Death Shadow actually won it. Red Deck wins was second, and then Is It Phoenix was third, technically. Uh, along yeah. with Jund, which was third, fourth, you get the idea. Jund yeah, yeah, yeah. being still viable is well, interesting. Well, well, well hold, it's Jund Delirium, so it's probably something a little bit crunchier than... Well, it's what, Traverse the Ovenwald or whatever? Yeah, Ovenwald, that's how yeah. you say it. Um, but yeah, Tarmogoyf, no four of Tarmogoyf, that's interesting. Sass's um, Trophy, Fapush. Fapush. <laughs> Fapush. Um, but we're still seeing like a variety. Yeah, Tarfire is seeing weird play now. No, um, it's a one of an a what? Uh, no, I'm just saying like I've seen it in a few deck lists now. I think it's really interesting. Um, but we are seeing still a fairly high variety of decks, I will say. Like we're still seeing Tron, we're still seeing Bloom, uh, Amulet Titan, whatever. We're yeah, still yeah. seeing Death Shadow, we're still seeing uh I think we saw uh Hardened Scales took one of yep. the tournaments as well. We saw Dredge took the latest tournament. Right. Um so we're still seeing a variety of decks, which leads me to believe 
that we still have a somewhat healthy format. What I'm worried about is the Is It Phoenix deck kind of taking over. Um, I do think, as we just kind of discussed, that like modern kind of, unless it gets really crazy, it will even itself out. Sure. But at this point, that's my biggest worry is that the Is It Phoenix deck is going to kind of push its way into the like, 12%, you know, start pushing even more percentage and then we have to start like, I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it getting past. I I'm, I'm going to say, is, what is it? We're at nine right We're now. At nine. I don't think it gets to 12. I don't um, think it will get to 12. I think there's too many good answers. Um, you well, just, just exile the graveyard. <laughs> well, right. And I just think it's <laughs> exactly. It's like a graveyard deck at the end of the day. Yeah, it is. You know, you really just bad. It, and you're good just to go. kidding. It's totally different. But like, yeah, deal this with the functions without the graveyard technically. Um, it's because, still a threat without the graveyard. Yes, you know because you still got because you can exile burn. it, but the the crackling Drake yeah. still gets its power boost even if you exile the cards. That's why it's really good against graveyard hate. Um, fun fact. Really? Yeah, that's why the is it Phoenix. That's why you play crackling Phoenix, not the cheaper uh, one from Hot Cat. Diggity. Yeah, that's why that's better for sure. <laughs> And it replaces it. Baby, that graveyard don't even matter. <laughs> well, I mean, it still does, because Phoenix is a key part of this, I think. To baby. just be able to chip away for three every turn is great. Baby, that graveyard don't even matter, <laughs> baby. Forget about that graveyard, baby. Forget about it. Another thing. Yeah. The Phoenix stack, right? Like, you could just throw oh, yeah, yeah. four of them in the yard and then get four three threes back. Yeah, and you've got, like, Faithless Looting. Dumb. You've got, That's uh, what is it, Thought Scour. Yeah. I mean, you've got plenty of ways to make that happen. That's so. dumb. So, also thinking the ice is back. Oh yeah, thinking the ice has made a spike recently back because from of the this stage deck. left. Yeah, uh, it was kind of not great in modern for a while, but I'm glad it's in. You know what I like about this deck, Kevin? What do, what do you just, like about and this? And I just kind of realized it. This stays dangerous at all points in the game. Oh yeah, which yeah. is super cool. So like early on, you've got young young P, young Peasy, young Peasy, the pyromancer, and uh, big T in the ice. So, <laughs> ice T. <tea. laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> of course, young peasy and iced tea. But like, honestly, you can flip thing in the eyes so quick. If any of you, hold on. If any of you listeners made it to this point in the episode and you just heard that and you stick around, <laughs> Why we you love not? you. Why would You're you the not? best. <laughs> I'm conf- that was comedy gold. Why would you not stick around? <laughs> what are you talking about? We are family friendly and hilarious. Need I say We are adorable. one of those things for sure. Anyway, yeah, this I deck is really... I thought so sweet. hard about swearing just I know, I wanted to really bad. I was like... <laughs> We're one of those things. <laughs> Beep! <laughs> Not anymore. We're none of those things. Um, regardless. <laughs> regardless. It stays aggressive at all points in the game. It's got yeah. burn early. It's got these big scary things early. Or a bunch of little pyro demons. Whatever they are, elementals, the elementals pyro <laughs> you monsters, know, demons, elementals, same thing. Uh, they're not Christian; they're demons. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I love it. So, yeah, and then later on, you start getting a crackle Drake, a crackle Drake, a cracker Drake. I, I'm not going to nickname all of them. The crackling Drakes, the Arc Light Phoenixes, <laughs> just to keep you in it, even if they deal with the thing in the eyes, the pyro yeah, answer. Yeah. Like, it just stays dangerous. Yeah, it does. I love it. This is like the Baker Mayfield of of decks. It woke up dangerous. <laughs> Kevin's not going to get that, da- that, that reference. No, I'm but not. For the football fans out there. Pigskin? Is that a thing? Yes, for the first time in season two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Just in time for the Super Bowl to end. The Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. <laughs> um, yeah, this will have gone out when either my Patriots are victorious or um, stinky losers. <laughs> I wonder which one it'll be. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Will, the question, the glaring question. Oh, right. You answered our thesis. I kind of answered it. Is what it do you turn? think? Yeah, go ahead. Uh. So, yeah. No, I don't like modern right now. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm going to be straight up. I'm going to be, like, butchery honest with you. Um, Modern, to me, is just kind of... Has become this weird paywall random format. And here's why. So we talked about all these random decks that are still in Modern. Just kind of, oh, well, yeah, there's Dredge. There's Valakut in there. Mm. There you go. It seems to me, like... (laughs) 
on the one hand, you can have this great deck on paper that's just not good in the meta right now. Like, doesn't mm-hmm. match up well against humans. Doesn't match up well against Death Shadow. Maybe it matches up well with, like, Blue-Red Aggro or something, but then two-thirds of the best decks are beating you out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. So if it doesn't match up well against these super strong aggro decks, it just kind of loses. But then there's also these random from the wings decks. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of the Valakut, the Dredge, the stuff that has just always been there. That just kind of comes out and wins. So if I have this deck that maybe doesn't match up great against all this other stuff, but maybe it does. Let's say it does. I could still just happen to lose because I didn't plan on seeing three to five Dredge decks in my like road to the sixth round of sixteen. You know what I mean? But does that? Does that mean that like seeing a variety of decks is a bad thing for the modern format then? I mean no, it I'm just saying? comes down to a matchup game in my in my eyes. Like I have a deck here that beats the majority of decks. I should play this, but oh man, I just can't really do anything against Eldrazi. Like that just kind of stinks. Like I mean, it seems like a like a handshake at that point. Like Hi, so then I'm playing this deck. What are you playing? Oh, you so win. So what's the answer? What do you? Think I don't is the know. Answer? That's the thing. Is like we have such a great card pool of all yeah. of like, in my opinion, Magic's best cards. Mm-hmm. I say that because they're the most inclusive, the most fair. They're no, there's not fast mana. Blah blah blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. So the the biggest card pool of Magic's best cards. Uh, it seems to me like we're just so surgical and precise with our deck lists. We, we are shaved to down the to point now where like. When every new set comes out, it's like we might get one or two cards that we will like push right. into a deck. It's like, but like everything is so like you have a list. This is the list. Yeah. End of story. You know, like you get yeah. some play in the sideboard, maybe. Sure. And like I do think that's kind of where you deal with like the one of decks that yeah. you don't really expect to see, but you still need to plan for. Um, Definitely. But like it's still, I mean, it is difficult. There's a wide variety of decks. And well, that's you can't the other plan thing. For everything. That's the other thing is like, You've got this is your list, yeah. and this is your sideboard, and you run this sideboard because these are all the other decks in the meta, yeah. and like it's so now I'm I essentially get to play with less cards. So like yeah. what I just don't I don't pack Nihil Spell Bomb, <laughs> and I lose to Dredge. Yeah, I, I get that it's not main board in a lot of decks, but yeah. even so, you know what I mean. It doesn't well, change enough. Sure, it's changing a bit. This this is brand this deck is brand new to modern. Yeah. Well. Not an is it deck. It's not right. brand new, but like this style of the deck with the Arc Light Phoenix and Drake. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. that is new. Sure. Um, Young Peasy's kind of been in for a while. I mean, and even Thing in the Ice every once in a while has kind of been in. Yeah, he um, was. He was. It's he, like a Delver deck style. Yeah, yeah. He was paired in a lot of Delvers, but um, but it doesn't it doesn't change enough to really like wet my interest because everything we know <laughs> how good the stuff is, right? Yeah. We know how good Red Deck wins is. Like yeah. it's gonna beat a bunch of stuff. But I don't know. It is tough, though, because, like, the issue at its heart feels like there's just too many decks. You can't plan for everything in this select number of cards that you have. But can you really sit here? Can I, like, televise to you people having too many decks in a format is a bad thing? You know what I mean? Like, I can't say that because that's not true either. But here's the other, here's the other, like, kicker to me. There's... All of these decks, this mechanic, variety, the kicker, yeah. absolutely. There's this big <laughs> variety of decks, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's almost to me as if, if you don't play one of these 30, 50 decks, which yeah. granted there might be there 30 might or be. 50, and then a select 10 or 15 are actually good. Yeah. You know, like I'm pretty sure Goblin Charbelter decks are still around. <laughs> but they're Pilger. yeah wow but they're bad right yeah exactly so not in legacy okay sure but like there's for 10 you or, wanting that legacy update we got you char Belger, coming to you <laughs> but there's 10 or 15 decks that will actually win at a tournament that are yeah. competitive so if you're not playing one of those it's like uh, well yes and no though because we did see no it depends on the tournament i think a big tournament you're right sure but like we we did look at a few like smaller like online tournaments things like that and we saw some one of decks that were just <sighs> off the wall R- sure but like online tournaments with eight people <sighs> i mean that's fair you're not gonna beat death shadow no like 15 times no i mean until you get to the top well and what i think the important thing to think about too is you if you have an eight player tournament 
You have eight. Well, you have seven other decks What's that, that you have to games think about. You play? Yeah. I mean, you only have to it's deal with matches. seven other decks, and most of them, not all of them, but there's probably going to be some repeat. Yeah. So, like, if you just know the meta, you can accommodate for that. And then you just play a deck off the wall that nobody knows what to do about. Right. And that's at that point, you're metagaming more than you're actually, like, just picking the best deck. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. And, I mean, you kind of have to... You should metagame if you're competitive in anything. Yeah, of course. But I like, get that. But, like, what I'm trying to say is it doesn't change enough. I know at the beginning of the episode, I realized we said modern evolves eventually. What yeah. I really meant was modern is like when you throw a new card into the ocean, like here, fetch Arclight Phoenix, <laughs> and it's like a big heavy rock of a of a card, and yeah. it splashes. There's a bunch of waves. Eventually, it'll dissipate. Yeah, the ripples end, and it's just the static lake once more. Yeah, I mean that's fair, and that's my that is just my view of modern right now. Now the decks we play in modern are fun. I They're, love the modern decks. The great decks are great because, one, they have solid cards in them. They have yep. a streamlined game plan. The strategy's thought out. Everyone knows how to play them. Yeah. They're good. Sweet. They're fun to play with. But after after so many games of playing Death Shadow yeah. or even Blue Eye Control, yeah. I'm like, all right, <laughs> next. Like, I could play Commander all, all day, yeah. every day. That game is never the same twice. Yeah. It's bonkers. But Modern Man? It is at this point. It feels fleshed out. Like, yeah. That's how it feels. It just feels yeah. like everybody kind of figured out Modern now. And like, yeah, yeah, you, the decks change and stuff like that, but everybody knows the decks. But everybody knows how to play. They do they. play each deck. Like, I mean, the winning decks change every once in a while, but I'm saying sure. like the decks themselves are pretty much always the same. Yeah. <laughs> so I do get that. I think in that case, you're right. But... I do like... There is the variety. There is variety, I and I like the variety. I think that is a very key point to a healthy format. I don't think it's sure. the only point. Uh, and so I would be remiss if I said that, mm -hmm. like, modern is perfectly healthy, because that's not true. It's not perfect. But... Well, yeah. It, it does have a high variance when it comes to the different decks that we see. Yeah. It's just the decks themselves have no variance in the card list. Right. Um, and so I think there's... It's... There's multiple layers to it. I like some of the things about modern right now, uh, yeah. for sure. I I do think that the variety is probably the most important thing about a healthy format, though. Right? Yeah, I mean, because I we think don't so. we don't want to go back to 2016 standard when it was, <laughs> you know, uh, m oh no, what was it? Aether? It was Marvel decks. Oh yeah, just eight Marvel decks in a tournament. That was awful. Yeah, that was such a bad time. That stinks. I get that. I yeah. get that. You don't want that. You want a variance. No. And even now, when 20% of the meta is a Golgari aggro deck. Yeah. Not for long, but even so. It's you know. aggro. Exactly. 100% of the meta. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we do <laughs> plan to look. Just freaking drakes and crasis everywhere. Yeah, honestly, though. Uh, we do kind of plan to look at standard next week. Uh, so we'll we'll jump into standard a little mm -hmm. bit. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Modern's interesting. That's that's my takeaway. You can and you can like modern. It's I still, do like modern. It is still fun to play. It's still a really good format, in my opinion. And I still like to play those modern decks. They're, yeah. they're fun to pilot. We haven't sat and played Magic in a while, dude. It's been so long. I mean, you had a baby. I guess that's more important. She can't play Magic yet, dude. She yeah, doesn't even know what to do with the cards. Dude, what are you teaching this girl? I'm, she won't even She's over a rattle. month old, Will. I know. Get your crap together. She's uh, <laughs> eight weeks, I think. Is that Ooh. how time works? Are you? Is it? No way. It's eight weeks already. Really? Hold on. Are you actually... <laughs> We're doing it live, people. We're doing it live. Because that's what you want to know. Um, that's what I want to know. So we're doing it live. I'm here that's now. Fair. I have to um, find out. Anyway, that's kind of our overview of modern right now. I know we kind of threw a lot of like actual Sorry, kind of numbers. Sorry, seven like, weeks. We're at the end weeks. of the seventh go. week of life. There we so go. So starting tomorrow, it will be eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. that is our overview of modern. I hope you guys found it useful. Uh, if you feel like we missed anything, I guess let us know in the comment section below. We may or may not read it. Um, probably will. We just may not comment on it. Um, but we do come to our last little segment here, which is yeah. our Crack of Packs, sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Last week, we said the first person to get a Shockland uh, gets something. Right. Um, and I got a Shockland, so I get something. I don't know what it is yet. Wasn't it I have to do something embarrassing? Or, or like charitable, right? Didn't right. We decide? So get a bunch of nerds together to go like feed the homeless or something. Yeah. Right? Is that um, what we're doing? I think so. Uh, 
What are we just oh. doing this again and like you have to do it twice or what if it's just like a leaderboard? Like whoever has the most Whoever has the most by the end of us opening this set. Yeah. I'm fine with that. You like that? Yeah, I like that. Not to take your win from you. No, no, I'm fine with that. I did not get uh, a shock land. I got cinder vines. I didn't get one either. I got tithe taker. Ooh. Which is I think a good card, actually. It is quite a good card. Um I would not take cinder vines. Uh, as much as I like that card in constructed, potentially, yeah. uh, it's like super anti control. Um, I did get the Azorius Knight Arbiter, which is a pretty interesting card. Mm. Uh, I also got Knight of the Last Breath, which I do really like. Um, so not Cindervines. What am I? What am I taking here, guys? Also got Frenzied Erinx. I don't know how to say that. Um, sure, Erinx on a Grande. <laughs> uh anyway um i actually think i'd take knight of the last breath it's very expensive but it has afterlife three yeah dog. and it is just a sweet ability sacrificing creatures to throw more creatures out. yeah i'm probably taking tithe taker it's a sweet card um it's it's fine it's gonna shut down like a few things it's yeah. not really it's, it's not, not excellent and limited but there's honestly there's not much else Oh, wait. In this pack. What? Oh, dude. Law Mage is binding. I mean, sure, That's but... That's a great card in this set. It's, fu it's limited. It's, it's awesome. good, but again, I'm looking for... Uh, well, I guess Tide Taker is definitely not a bomb, so I do need removal. I don't know. You're right. It is the binding. I'm always right. Forget everything I just said. Remember how I said I tell the truth all the time? <laughs> Where you want? Um... <laughs> It's probably the binding. I would take the binding for sure. It's good with flash. Yeah. yeah. All right. Forget everything I said. <laughs> oh. No, you can't take those. No. <laughs> uh, all right. I want it. So no more shock lands. I'm still up one to nothing. One zero. -oh. Uh, we're only two backs in though. Ba -ba -da -ba. How do you feel about this set, by the way? Just in general. I like it. Quick overview. Give me thirty seconds. What do you like about it? What do you don't? Oh baby, it's got everything. A big old sweaty orcs breaking stuff. It's got the the church people smashing stuff for for monies. Uh, it's got those weird little guys with the crab hands going around making the big bubble crisis. Uh, what other guilds are here? Oh yeah, it's the police. Actually, psych. I hate this set. Blank the police. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I I forgot one. Simic. Sweaty orcs. No, you said Simic. Little weird guys with the crappy Ractos? hands. Or oh, and it's got these weird clowns. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, of these uh, uh, these weird Pennywise-looking Pennywise. jammas. <laughs> Mamma jammas. I can't say the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a very different person without a mic in front of me. I, I've come to realize. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the set's cool. Um, yeah, it's got everything. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Ravnica's Hottest Club. This is degrading now. All right. Uh, I think we are going to end this episode, oh, guys. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, poke the bell. Um, um, will uh, you comment below with what Ravnica's Hottest Club is? Ravnica's Hottest Club is... Uh, and Sham wow, where the Simics send all of their used laboratory towels. It's just a room <laughs> full of giant crusty the look towels. I just gave you. It's like what the heck? Um, I look for that look. I dig for that. I dig deep. Yeah, you really dug deep on this one, guys. Uh, we're gonna end. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Club. Kevin. My name is Will. <laughs> this has been ever soft. I'm gonna go take some Theraflu. I'm starting to see stuff. <laughs>